Hey, hey, Glenn Morris here again from the Smart Energy Lab with a yet another big box. This one's from a company called Swatton. It's got an odd name, but actually it's a contraction of, uh, <laughs> um, of uh, their, their uh, Chinese name uh, and their company name at a certain place in China, as often as the case. But anyway, Swatton, what do they make? They make a range of things, including hybrid inverters. So what I've got here is their um, H1 series single phase hybrid inverter. So let's get in the box. Okay. Don't need the gloves anymore. Get some high density foam. Comes in handy, by the way, these thin sheets, when you've got to do a lot of kneeling at a switchboard or something. <laughs> so let's just call it a kneeling pad included in the box. Uh, little mystery box here. Look at that in a minute. A mounting bracket. Looks quite a long mounting bracket. And then we've got the inverter itself, packed very securely with some more high density foam. Okay, all right, time to get it out. So let's take a look at it. I've never actually seen this uh, inverter before. It's been sitting out in my warehouse for quite a long time, maybe about six months. So apologies Swatton, I did have a lot of, uh, of uh, unboxings to get through lately. So what have we got here? Um, I better start with looking at the, the key features on the data sheet that comes on, on their website. So it's a single phase hybrid inverter. And by the look of it, it's got backup. So it's got grid port and backup ports. It's got a very low startup voltage of just 50 volts on the PV array. And it's got an enormous oversized rating for the PV, 330%. So this little six kilowatt inverter, you can oversize it 330%. Now, you might go, oh, what's the purpose of that? I mean, I looked at the data sheet earlier and it said um, 13 kilowatts of PV on what's basically a six kilowatt inverter. It, it might not make sense to you, but you're thinking only of the AC side. Hybrid inverters, well certainly this one, can do two clever things. It can convert DC into AC and supply your home or export it to the grid, but it can also convert solar DC into battery DC at the same time and charge your battery. So it can be charging your battery and exporting at the same time, so it wants lots of PV typically double what you would think um, looking at the rated power of this unit. And of course, if you happen to be um, installing this system in Australia under a small scale renewable energy scheme, creating STCs, the more PV, the better basically, because that's actually keeping the cost down. And not every day is a sunny day. So you might think well, 13 kilowatts is just too much because I don't need it. Well, maybe in the middle of winter on a cloudy day, that 13 kilowatt system might only be putting out one or two kilowatts. So big is good. Go big, uh, go hard. So let's look at the uh, the unit itself. On the bottom here, uh, we've got uh, two MPPTs, and the two MPPTs are equally rated at 16 amps operating current and 20 amps short circuit current. So 20 amps that'll 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 do you very nicely. Um, so that means you can have uh, up to a 16 amp short circuit rated panel connected to these and that's a pretty big panel. Uh, it's got a battery port, and it's got a bunch of other ports here. So we've got uh, COM ports, uh, battery communication port, uh, and a dongle, no doubt for Wi-Fi connection. We've got our AC ports for backup and for grid. And I note that the backup mode gives you up to 10 millisecond break. So it's what's often referred to as UPS, but technically it just means very, very short break. Uh, you won't even see your lights flick at 10, excuse me, at 10 milliseconds, because uh, uh, a waveform is, is 20 milliseconds per cycle. So yeah, it, you'll be fine, or per half cycle. Um, 
other key features is uh, maximum rated output current at 230 volts is uh, 26.1 amps. Now, remember, you've got to allow for um, a little bit of derating of products, particularly when choosing breakers. So you're not going to be putting a 25 amp breaker in there. You'll be going to more likely a uh, 32. Okay, so uh, efficiency, 97.3% is the maximum efficiency and 97% is the euro efficiency. Uh, it's got the usual um, protection and functions we expect these days, grid monitoring, reverse polarity protection. Like I said um, in previous videos, in inverters these days are so good at looking after you, even if you do the wrong thing, they'll generally protect themselves from, from uh, things like reverse polarity. Uh, including AC short circuit. Uh, they've got leakage current protection, surge protection. It's a DC type two and AC type two surge protection. And it's got an integrated DC PV switch, which on this unit is on the side here. Aha, here we go. So it's on the side. Now I can see that this has got a little latch here, which allows you to lock it in the off position. So you can slide it into the off position. There's a hole for a padlock here and you can, oh, it's pretty hard to do, but you can actually stop it being operated. Now that means it complies with one of the three criteria in Australia for an integrated DC isolator in PCE, PCE meaning power conditioning equipment like an inverter, an integrated DC isolator needs to be lockable in the off position, marked on and off and load braking. Well, uh, there it is. So no external DC isolator required. That's really a big time saver and a safety um, uh, level, level of safety that you would expect. Um, it's got a display on here. I don't want to peel the little thing off. Oh, I'm a bit tempted. Ooh. No, <laughs> it's got a little stick on display um, protection. Uh, it looks like it's got some big numbers and some small numbers on here. I haven't used this, so I can't tell you exactly what the display does. And uh, I bet there's gonna be something in here that's very useful. So let's have a look. Right, so we've got some quick start guide like that. We've got a list of components, very nice. We've got uh, some, uh, an RJ45 plug and mm, something to make it weatherproof. We've got a couple of those. Uh, we've got some lugs, presumably for connecting onto batteries. And we've got some, uh, PV connectors, because you've got to have matching PV connectors uh, by brand and type. So whatever these brand and type are, the matching ones are here. And an energy meter. Now, as soon as you've got a hybrid inverter and you want to be able to uh, understand the amount of self-consumption, you need a meter. On top of that, you also need this meter if you want to be able to support loads because this meter goes upstream on the grid side of, of all of your loads, hopefully, if you can get this up at the main switchboard and run comms cable back to the inverter. And therefore, it can tell the inverter whether you're about to export power or not and whether it should start charging a battery instead of exporting that power. Or conversely, you're starting to import power and it's going to use your battery, particularly at nighttime, to displace that imported energy. So this little meter is pretty critical to the whole process and you do want to get it upstream of all of your loads that you want to be able to uh, support with self-use. Um, self we've got uh, a couple more connectors here. Um, we've got AC connector, um, a little plug-in port there, and uh, some wall mounts. And I'm guessing this is going to be a dongle, the ubiquitous dongle in a slightly confusing to open box. There we go. <laughs> there it is, the dongle. Now, I, I, personally, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about the use of dongles. I guess from a manufacturer's point of view, it means that uh, you can have different applications, like some dongles have Wi-Fi, some have 4G, some have Ethernet. Um, 
And so you can choose what's ever appropriate for your location and country and just plug in or supply the correct one. But it's one more little thing that's dangling out the bottom here. But this looks very sturdy and it's got a locking nut too. So I'm pretty happy with the design of this one. Some have a big long antenna that sort of, well, it looks a bit risky. And actually this one here has a little, little antenna port. It looks like you can put an external antenna on it. Well, that's something I haven't seen before. So let's say you're trying to get Wi-Fi out of a tin shed to your main house. Looks like you can run a little extension antenna. So there you go. Um, this is the Swatton 6 kilowatt hybrid inverter single phase. I should point out they do um, three phase uh, inverters as well, uh, and they come in a range of sizes. So thanks very much Swatton for sending this to me. Uh, looking forward to learning more about your products. Yeah, thanks for watching. Check it.